name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for saying yes. I'm going to keep Sunday holy and better today than, well, than yesterday, because today is the last Sunday of the year. What is Sunday today? Is Christ the King. Christ the King. The King of Glory comes. Are we going to hear that, Jess? Maybe. You'll have to stay tuned, right? Jesus Christ is the King of the universe. We ask Him to extend to us His mercy. And we're sorry for the times that we have offended Him and not put God first in our life. And we don't put Him first, then we get all other kinds of things wrong. Let's ask Him for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us, Let us go, go rejoicing, rejoicing to, the to the house of, of the Lord. Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let, Let us go, go rejoicing, rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let, Let us, us go, go rejoicing, rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let, Let us, us go, go rejoicing, rejoicing to the, the house of, of the Lord. Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The ruler sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation, and indeed we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so... Truth be told, everybody at Team St. Martha's has had better days. <laughs> Is that right? That's right? We're all suffering woes here. And, um, and I know many of you guys are out there. Uh, Jess is back. She's not sick, but she's got some challenges. Diane, we pray for Diane's husband, Pete. Um, he's having some medical issues related to evacuation. I'll say that. Right. And so many of you know how tough that can be. So please keep them in their prayers and your prayers. It's tough when your loved one is suffering. Like one of the dogs in Diane's family, they had to put down. So praying for all you guys out there. You'll see that dog again in heaven one day. But uh, it's hard. It's hard, hard, hard. And some of you know a friend of mine, a classmate of mine passed away. So tough, 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 tough out here. Is Does God give us any hope? Yes or no? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Absolutely, right? That's the good news, right? What is the good news? So first, we got to go. We'll go at it this way, in a Father Dave kind of way. Who out there knows how to draw? You know how to draw? Jess knows how to draw. Yeah, I've not seen any of your work. I'd like to see some. Jess knows how to draw. You know how to draw? Yeah. No. If you're from the South, do you know how to draw? Southern draw. Uh -huh. <laughs> Does your dentist know how to draw? Your dentist know how to draw? Um, yes. Your socks know how to draw. When I was a kid, we were never bored. We didn't have iPads or any of that jazz, smartphones. We didn't have smartphones. We just had landlines. We were never bored as kids because if you had a piece of paper or a pen or a pencil or a crayon, you could just draw, right? And like that, I'm not a great artist. I, I like to draw. I still try to draw comics now and then. Right? Drawing was always fun. You draw rockets or dinosaurs. What would you draw, Jess? Music notes? Flowers. Yeah. A lot of girls draw flowers and ponies and things like that, right? Drawing was always fun. Does God know how to draw? What do you think? Did Jesus in his human nature know how to draw? Let me be more specific. Yes. Yes, of course, yes. Yes? Yeah, we knew he drew on the ground. Draw. If you got two, two cowboys in the middle of the road and it's about to strike noon, what's going to happen? They're going to draw. Whoosh. Right? So, what happens when a bad situation comes upon you that you didn't ask for? Right? Your coworker, let's say, I don't know, gets COVID. Or maybe they don't get COVID, but they want five days off from work, so they say they have COVID, and now you have to do your work and their work. Right? Or, even more, well, you, know, you get a, a medical situation happens to you you didn't ask for right your bowels decide to stop working in some way congratulations right that stinks in lots of ways right or god forbid a person you absolutely love and care about has decided that they're done with you and they're going to get a younger model right what do you do or a death happens to someone you care about what, what are you going to do bad things happen to you you didn't ask for what do you do then diane what do you do Diane, do you turn? You pray? 
you remember that God knows how to draw. I brought the crucifix from the altar for a reason. Like we see this cross, and I think we forget exactly the message that it's trying to tell us, right? When you see the cross, you have to explain to your non-Christian friend, your pagan friend, why you all like this cross. And this guy, capital punishment, like, why do you Christians like this? I mean, he was here's this guy killed unjustly. Why do you see that cross and, and take hope and smile and, and, and have a feeling response of love? Why? Well, because he gave his life for all of us, because that's how he saved humanity. Because right there, God is drawing. Drawing, Father David? Yes, he's drawing. What is he drawing? God is drawing good out of evil. God is so good. I know people want to say that, like, they would rather follow a God that prevents evil from happening. Well, then you would never know how good God is anyway, right? If he could prevent all evil from happening, he would prevent the bad thoughts. He'd prevent, like, someone from hurting you, which could feel really good. But then you wouldn't have something to balance it with. And not that God lets evil happen so that you'd appreciate it. But better and more powerful than the prevention of any evil is God's ability to draw good out of any evil situation. We look at this crucifix, we think of Jesus on the cross, we got a big one up there, and he, here's this bad thing happening to him that he didn't ask for. And what is he doing? He is opening this up to his father, and he's at trusting that his father is going to draw good out of this situation done to him that he didn't ask for. And when he holds that up to God, and he's the second person, the Trinity, when he holds it up to the first, in union with the third, what will happen? Will God draw good out of that? Yes or no? Yeah, he will. He will raise him up and not just raise Jesus up. He's going to save you and me and reunite us with our loved ones one day in heaven and that dog we're referencing and all these bad situations. Like God is going to use this unjust situation to bring eternal justice and restore, well, the world. God can draw all right. He's the best artist possible. And when things are a mess and thrown at you unjustly, what do you do? Many people like to move their jaw and complain. People like to become bitter and angry and resentful and spiteful and full of acid and stress and rah, 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 and all these kinds of things. And then they live in the past. They worry about the future. We talked about that last week. And I think we, are, we see these crosses so much we forget. We got a God that knows how to draw. And when bad things happen, it's an occasion for us to draw on our faith and say, all right, God, I lift this situation up to you. As terrible as it is, draw good out of it. I believe in you. And instead of giving you a hundred acts of disbelief and lack of faith, I'm going to put my faith in you. You can draw good out of any situation, even this one. And that's what that other thief on the cross is doing, the good thief, right? There he is, and he's suffering justly for his crimes, as he admits, right? And instead of, like, thinking about himself and others and, like, and like hurling insults at Jesus, he lifts that whole situation up to him. Hey, Lord, remember me. You come into your kingdom. Today you'll be with me in paradise. That's the be be Imagine this guy's mom. What do you think this thief on the cross, what his mom was thinking? Oh, my son was a waste. He got what he deserved. You know what? He didn't bring the turkey for Thanksgiving. He stole the turkey. Right? <laughs> now he's getting stuffings. I don't know. Like his family's probably ashamed of him. He should have the happiest Italian mother ever. He's going to heaven. <laughs> Boom! First one admitted. Right? If you and I do this, God can change your fortunes and change them in ways that you've not even thought of, right? The, let's, say the, let's say the husband who has a wife cheat on him, right? Unjustly, now he's left with the kids all by himself. She's taken up with, I don't know, Harrison Ford? I don't know, a younger, <laughs> modern, older model? I don't know. She left him with her, the Brad Pitt of, of bad boys, dudes with, I don't know, whatever women like, abs and motorcycles, I don't know, whatever they like, good houses. Good jawline, who knows? And he's left with the kids all by himself. He's got to take on two jobs and he's trying to like be present to those kids and carry on. And what about the vows that he made? And he's going through all that soul searching. Well, 
he can get resentful and bitter and like hate on all women in his mind and like live in regret and then miss the kids who are with him right now, the opportunities around him, the opportunity the church would offer maybe for a moment to get free and then to meet Mrs. Wonderful as she comes back, in, or not back, but comes into his life. He could miss all that if he's like still harboring thoughts of resentment and unforgiveness and doesn't lift that situation up to God. But if he does, God who forgives and, and empowers and can bring good out of evil, can bring good out of that situation and remove the stress from that guy's life, give him a new beginning, a new appreciation for the blessings he does have, for the children that he did have with this lady, and then bring someone else into his life. And with a deeper appreciation for the vows that we make and holding them forever, right? God can do all of that. And then if he can forgive her, well, then he's not like a barnacle sucking on those bad memories attached to her when she's not even around. He's now free, free from resentment, free from evil thoughts, bad thoughts, negativity, and appreciative of what he has. God can do and he can bring good out of that. He'd have to draw on his faith to do that. My friend who passed away, Father Chris Real, God rest his soul, died at 45. Terrible. Can God bring good out of it? Yes or no? Yes? That's what I'm preaching about. I don't want to start over. It's gone long enough. Yeah, and so now my friend Chris Real can help all of you. Right? If you're going through a real problem, you can say, all right, Father Chris, help us out. God can do all good things. So when an unjust situation, a, tra a trial, a tragedy has befallen you, you can complain and waste away all of that. Or you can remember that God knows how to draw. And you can draw on your faith and lift it up to him and say, God, draw good out of this. And if you do, then the picture of Christ is drawn in you. And the resurrection happens. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And raise our prayers to Almighty God. For the Holy Father, may God continue to grant him wisdom and courage in leading the church on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For lawmakers, may God's grace direct their hearts in proposing laws that protect the life and rights of all people, including those yet to be born. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those living in war-torn lands or governed by oppressive regimes, may God protect and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all gathered here, as we close this church year, may God lift our hearts in gratitude, revealing his many blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the faithful departed, may the King of Kings reveal his face and bring them lasting joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the end of the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now for those petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray here as an online St. Martha community. We pray for, uh, for Diane's husband, Pete. Uh, for any of you and anyone out there who is going 
uh, through a tough physical time with their bodies and maybe even with evacuation issues. May God help all of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the loved ones of families who are physically suffering, may God help them out and draw good out of those situations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are having issues in their families, may God help them and draw good out of those situations we freely offer to him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For uh, my friend, Father Chris Real, uh, for the holy repose of his soul and for his family uh, who miss him, his friends, and for anybody who asks Father Chris's intercession that if they're having real problems, Father Real may help them out. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people who are experiencing natural disasters. We pray for the people up in Buffalo. Not only did they have to lose to the Minnesota Vikings, they have to shovel out several feet of snow. So may God protect them and keep them warm, especially seniors and the homeless. May they find shelter and help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for a blessing upon all of your homes this Thanksgiving. May all those who gather, in America at least, to give thanks, give thanks to God. May they be um, present to those around them. May God be present to them too. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, turn toward us and hear the prayers you inspire us to ask. For we ask them in faith through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption. And making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory is without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, a blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Martha, St. Therese, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained, your entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your people scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Uh, so we want to say thank you to all of you who keep your faith and go to Mass even at uh, your local parish and still try to watch this Mass to grow in your faith in these other ways and all the different ways you're praying for the people you say, uh, you know, you see, you say a little bit of what they're going through. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One day we'll hopefully all be in heaven together. Uh, we hope that God blesses your tables and your homes at Thanksgiving, wherever you may be. Uh, Cradley loves Thanksgiving. I got uh, three brothers, two of them are married, and so when you're married, should you listen to your wife, yes or no? She says yes, Diane says yes. They're both biased because they're both wives. <laughs> but yes, so my bro two of my brothers, my younger brothers are married, and they do Thanksgiving with their families. And so my older brother who's not married, me and him and my parents and Cragley, uh, we all go and we make turkey subs. My mom got tired a couple years ago of making a turkey, so we make our own subs with like a turkey breast and play board games all day. It's a great time, and Craggy gets lots and lots of food under the table. Everybody's giving her something. She loves this day. So I hope your Thanksgiving is really good wherever you are and who you spend it with. And if a lot of your family has already passed away, then be thankful for those relationships and imagine what you're going to be doing in heaven together when you get there. When the pilgrims uh, wanted to go into church uh, on Thanksgiving, how did they open the door? With a turkey. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen.